in this video, I'm going to show you my number one trick in Affinity Photo. This trick completely changed the way I edit my photos, but it can be a little tricky to learn. So today, I'm going to break it down nice and simple so that anyone can use it. Let's get started. The trick I'm going to show you today is called blend ranges. Blend ranges are extremely useful, but they're not intuitive to use. So in this video, I'm going to show you how blend ranges work and then give you two common examples of how I use blend ranges when I'm editing my own photos. During this tutorial, we'll use this beautiful mountain photo as well as a simple image of some colored rectangles. As always, you can download these images in the video description. To see how blend ranges work, I'm first going to make a new fill layer, and then I'll give it a nice bright green color. Next, we'll open blend ranges, which you can do by pressing on this gear icon over here. Blend Ranges has a lot of options, but fortunately, all we need to focus on is this area over here. 99% of the time, you'll just use the underlying composition range. This lets you determine where a layer will be visible based on how bright or dark the underlying layer is. That might sound a little confusing, but you'll see what I mean. Pay attention to what happens to our green fill layer as I bring this node down. As you can see, our green fill starts to disappear from the darkest areas of the underlying layer. Then if I bring the node back up, our green fill becomes fully visible again. But now if I bring this node down, then our green fill starts to disappear from the brightest areas of the underlying layer. And if I want to make the green even less visible in the bright areas, I can drag the node to the left until the green is only being applied to the black rectangle. And as you might expect, the same could be done in reverse to make it so the green is only applied to the brightest rectangles until it's only applied to the white rectangle. That's all fine and well, but if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering how you're supposed to remember all this. Well, luckily for you, I have a great way to remember what each node does. This might be a little corny for your taste, but you'll never forget it. <laughs> So the super secret trick to remembering what each node does is shh, shh, as in shadows, which starts with an S, and highlights, which starts with an H. By moving the shadows node, we can make the green go from 100% visible in the shadows to 0% visible in the shadows. And by moving the highlights node, we make the green go from 100% visible in the highlights to 0% visible in the highlights. And remember, this is a super secret tip for blend ranges, so you'll need to shh. <laughs> if you remember to shh, you'll always remember how blend ranges work. Okay, now that we know how blend ranges work, Let's come over to our second example image to see some practical cases for when you'd use blend ranges. We'll start off with what I most commonly use blend ranges for, brightening a photo. First, let's apply a brightness and contrast adjustment layer and make the photo brighter. Our photo is definitely a lot brighter now, but we're losing a lot of details in the clouds since the highlights in the clouds are being brightened too much. Fortunately, this is the perfect time for blend ranges to come to the rescue. Before I can change anything though, 
I want you to think of which node we need to move. If we don't want this adjustment applied to the highlights in the photo, which node should we bring down? As a reminder, remember to use shh. By remembering shh, we know that this node affects the shadows and this node affects the highlights. So if we don't want our adjustment layer applied to the highlights, then we need to bring the highlights node down. Pay attention to the clouds as I bring the highlights node up and down. You can see that blend ranges allows us to dramatically brighten the photo without losing all the details in our highlights. And if you still think too many highlights are being brightened, remember that you can bring the highlights node a little to the left. After brightening our photo, it's looking a little flat, so feel free to increase the contrast to give the photo a little more depth. Perfect, that looks great. Now let's look at our second example of when to use blend ranges, which is when you want to apply coloring to the highlights or shadows. First, we'll apply a recolor adjustment and then choose a nice gold color for our highlights. Then we'll open blend ranges. As a review, which node should we lower if we want this coloring to be applied to just the highlights? Well, to make it applied to just the highlights, we need to bring the shadows node down. Then bring the node to the right until you like the way the coloring looks. Now we've applied beautiful coloring to just the highlights. If we want, we can apply another recolor adjustment to give our shadow some color. I'll make mine purple. Now we can use blend ranges to apply this adjustment to just the shadows. All we need to do is bring the highlights node down. Now our shadows have a nice purple color but it's a little strong for my taste, so I'm going to lower the opacity. Much better. Now let's see a before and after of both of our color adjustments. And then a before and after of all the adjustments we've made. As you can see, blend ranges are extremely powerful. This was just two examples of what blend ranges can do, but I'm sure you'll find many other uses for blend ranges during your own edits. Thanks for watching, my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial. If you want to learn our Affinity workflow, then check out the free course below.